Hello and welcome to History episode 14. I don't know how long I can keep up the fingers for. But episode 14. Today we are talking everything Empress Josephine. Thank you to everybody that took part in my poll. Um, Empress Josephine versus Mary Queen of Scots and Empress Josephine won by a landslide. So yeah, please do take part in next week's poll um, because you can affect the outcome and um, please do keep on suggesting people that you would like to be seen uh, in history episodes and if you consider yourself an expert on a particular woman from history let me know because we can get together and um do some cool history stuff i've been looking at um my patreon page i'm trying to figure it out it's very very confusing so basically what i'm trying to do is set different tiers of perks and memberships and stuff like that so for two pounds you can have a shout out in a video for five pounds you can have this for ten pounds you can have that for 50 pounds you can um send me the information about an incredible woman in your life and i'll record a personal history video for you and then there'll be different tiers of membership so for like uh two pounds a month there's there'll be bonus episodes and for ten pounds a month i'll take you on guided tours around uh different historical places that i go to um and um for you know i'm just trying to figure out the tiers of membership so there there'll also be kind of extra bonus content so um i've done a tour around my house um i filmed that one and there will just be videos of me outside of a history context doing um doing me things so please let me know what you think would make a cool um patreon extra if if you like um and i will get working on that as soon as i figure out how to w make the app work anyway without further ado on to empress josephine i know i don't seem it today but i'm feeling a bit naff today um you may know you may not know that i'm gonna let a little bit of light in sun's not my friend today is that okay it's a bit dark isn't it i don't flipping know it's too sunny <laughs> um okay Right, I'm just going to go straight in with Empress Josephine, wife of Napoleon, first Empress of France, Duchess of Navarre, letter writer and lover of roses. That is who we are talking about today. Born Marie Joseph Rose Tasha de la Pagerie on the 23rd of June, 19, 1763 in Le Trois. Yeah, Le Trois. I can't read my own writing. In Martinique, which is a lovely little island in the Caribbean. Nice. To a wealthy French Creole family that owned a sugarcane plantation, which is now a museum, which you can go and visit in Martinique. Um, I haven't been to Martinique. I've sailed past Martinique on a cruise, but that whole area around there um, is, is very beautiful and lovely. Um, her father, Joseph, was a lieutenant in the Marines and her mother, Rose Clare, was Irish. Of all things. Age three, hurricanes decimated the estate and the family were left struggling financially after their plantation was destroyed. That whole area is um, in a hurricane belt, so they're really, really susceptible to hurricanes, unfortunately. Um, Ed May... Josephine's paternal aunt was a mistress of Francois the Marquis de Beaurnais, a French aristocrat, and Edme arranged the advantageous marriage of her niece to Francois's son Alexandre. In October 1779, aged 16, Josephine went to France with her father, married Alexandre, Alexandre? On the 13th of December 1779 in Noisy-le-Grand and they had two children, a son 
called Eugene in 1781 and a daughter called Hortense in 1783. The marriage was not a happy one. Uh, Alex frequented brothels. He disappeared for long periods of time. Once he disappeared for up to a year, um, which led to a court ordered separation during which Josephine and the kids lived at Alice's expense in the Piedmont, in Piedmont Abbey with Bernadian nuns. Fair enough. I think if my husband disappeared for a year, I'd probably be probably be doing the same thing. This is all happening, of course, around the time of the French Revolution. Um, so it's important to bear in mind th that political context in which this is happening. And on the 2nd of March, 1794, during the terror um, of the French Revolution, the Committee of Public Safety ordered the arrest of Alexandre and Josephine. They were jailed in calm prison in Paris until July 1994. 1794. Why do I keep trying to say 19? Stop me. 1794. So she's jailed for March, March, April, May, June, July, five months. During this time, Josephine's only way of communicating with her children was by writing on laundry lists, which were then smuggled out of the prison. This was soon discovered and banned. So for the last couple of months, she had no contact with her kids whatsoever. Her husband was sentenced to death and guillotined on the 23rd of July, 1794. At the Place de la Révolution, which is now the Place de la Concorde in Paris. Josephine was freed five days later, thanks to the fall and execution of Robespierre, who is one of the main architects of the French Revolution. One year later, she was allowed to recover all of Alex's possessions. Good stuff. In 1795, Josephine meets Napoleon Bonaparte. He's six years her junior, and she became his mistress. To say he was smitten with her is an understatement. He was obsessed with her. Um, they exchanged many, many saucy letters, which have survived to this day. Um, they are very famous letters. Uh, I should really insert here where you can go and see said letters. Uh, I will find out and I will let you know when I upload this video. Um, he proposed to her in January 1796, so not, not even a year later, and they married just two months later on the 9th of March in 1796. That's fast moving. Napoleon's family weren't keen on him marrying an older widow with two kids, but he didn't care. He was, he was crazy about her. Battle soon took Napoleon away and the love letters continued, but Josephine rarely wrote back and when she did, she was quite matter-of-fact and cold towards him. Um, he, on the other hand, kept a picture of her in his pocket and was said to kiss it often. Josephine, left behind in Paris in 1796, began an affair with a handsome lieutenant called Hippolyte. Hippolyte, 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 Charles. Uh, once the rumours reached Napoleon, he was pissed. And he started an affair of his own in 1798 with a lady called Pauline Forer in Egypt. And she became known as uh, Napoleon's Cleopatra. She was quite a famous mistress of his. The relationship between Napoleon and Josephine was never the same. After that, the letters became less loving and both continued having multiple affairs. In December 1800, Josephine was almost killed in the plot of the Rue saint Niche, an attempt on Napoleon's life where a bomb was planted in a parked car. Um, thankfully, everybody got out alive. Hortense, her daughter, got a bit of glass in her hand, but it was fine, they patched her up and then they went to the opera. As, as one does. Napoleon was elected Emperor of the French in 1804, making Josephine Empress of the French. The coronation ceremony officiated by Pope Pius VII at Notre Dame Cathedral on the 2nd of December 1804. And she... Oh, 
I'm sure I've written she had a cart. A court. She <laughs> a court. She had a cart appointed to her. No, she had a court. <laughs> she had a court appointed to her and all the offices in the household that the Queen had had before the revolution. Uh, when after many years it became clear that Napoleon and Josephine were not going to have any children, Josephine was too old by this point, Napoleon started to think about getting a divorce. And the final nail in the coffin was when uh, Josephine's grandson, Napoleon Charles Bonaparte, who Napoleon had named as his heir and successor, even though he wasn't related to him, um, he died of croup in 1807. Croup's nasty. I had croup when I was a kid and to this day I still, when I get a really bad cough or infection, I bark like a sea lion, which is amusing for everyone listening, but not for me. Like I literally bark like a sea lion because I had croup when I was a kid. Not, not a fun illness. All I remember about having croup is that I missed a school trip. The Chilton Open Air Museum, and I was really annoyed about it. But I digress. Anyway, so Napoleon's heir died of croup in 1807. So Napoleon begins creating a list of eligible princesses, and he told Josephine at dinner on the 30th of November 1809, I think, it, yeah, 1809, that in the interest of France, he needed a wife who could produce an heir. Um, Josephine was cool with that. She agreed to the divorce. The ceremony took place on the 10th of January, 1810. It was a grand social occasion and each of them read a statement of devotion to each other, which was quite sweet. On March the 11th, 1810, Napoleon married Marie-Louise of Austria and they had a son one year later. Despite the separation, Napoleon insisted that Josephine kept her title of Empress of France. And she went to live at the Chateau de Malmaison near Paris. And her and Napoleon remained close friends and she lived in extreme comfort at his expense. Not bad. Not bad going, Josephine. Um, yeah, he was, I think he was quite taken with her. I wonder how his new wife, Marie-Louise, felt about Josephine retaining the title of Empress. I'd be pretty knocked, but, um, yeah, interested to hear her side. Josephine died in the Rue Malmaison on the 29th of May, 1814, after taking a walk with Tsar Alexander I of Russia in the gardens. She was buried in the nearby church of Saint-Pierre, of Pierre-Saint-Paul, Napoleon learned of her death while in exile on Elba. He locked himself in his room for two days. The Napoleonic regime has fallen by this point. He's in exile. He locked himself in his room for two days, refusing to see anyone or eat. Um, despite his affairs, divorce and remarriage, his last words on his deathbed at St. Helena were France, the army, the head of the army, Josephine. Fun facts about Empress Josephine. It's disputed that she was born in St. Lucia rather than Martinique. Um, the family seemed to have had two houses, one in St. Lucia and one in Martinique. The plantation was obviously in Martinique. Um, so her birthplace is questionable. But as St. Lucia was under English occupation... At that point in time, she may have been registered in Martinique in order to preserve her French citizenship. So there we go. Uh, her daughter, Hortense's son, became Napoleon III, Emperor of the French. She made some very important babies who made some very important babies. She's the grand matriarch of a lot of different royal families. So her daughter Hortense's son becomes Napoleon III, Emperor of the French. Her son Eugene's son Maximilian married into the Russian imperial family. Eugene's daughter Josephine married King Oscar I of Sweden. And Eugene's daughter Amelie married Emperor Pedro I of Brazil becoming Empress of Brazil. Her biographer 
Carolee Erickson wrote, In choosing her lovers, she followed her head first, then her heart. So she was certainly adept at identifying men who were most capable of fulfilling her financial and social needs. Josephine was actually a renowned spendthrift. She was naturally full of kindness, generosity and charm and was praised as an amazing hostess. She was described as being of average height, svelte, shapely, with silky long chestnut brown hair, hazel eyes and a sallow complexion. Her nose was small and straight and her mouth well formed. However, she rarely smiled because she didn't like her teeth. They were quite bad. She was praised for her elegance, style and low silvery, beautifully modulated voice. Quite, quite the catch. In 1799, when Napoleon was in Egypt, Josephine purchased Malmaison, which you can still go and see today. She had it landscaped in an English style and created a rose garden. She wanted to collect all known species of rose. So whenever Napoleon's commander seized a warship, it was searched for plants to be sent back to Josephine's garden. Just kind of cute. She had around 250 different species of rose in her garden when she died in 1814. She produced the first written history of the cultivation of roses and is believed to have hosted the first rose exhibition in 1810. The rose souvenir de la Malmaison appeared in 1844, 30 years after her death, named in her honour by a Russian Grand Duke planting it in the Imperial Garden of St. Petersburg. Before Napoleon, she went by the name Rose, or Marie Rose. After marrying Napoleon, her name became Josephine Bonaparte. It was his nickname for her. He called her Josephine. Before that, she was known as Rose. Probably hence the obsession with the Roses, her former identity. Um, in 1859, Napoleon III, her grandson, commissioned a statue for La Savanne Park in Port-de-France in Martinique. In 1991, it was decapitated and splattered with red paint and the head has never been found. So, get to Martinique and find that head, people. Um, Josephine has inspired fiction books, songs, TV series, um, and even a fashion range by Galliano, which is pretty cool. She did briefly return to Martinique in 1788 after her first divorce from Alexandre, but a slave uprising forced her back to France in 1790. So she only spent two years of her adult life in Martinique. So there we go. That is Empress Josephine. What do you guys think? She seems like a bit of a cunning seductress. She seems like a, a very sweet, very pleasant, very well-mannered a uh, beautiful, beautiful lady who knew how to use the charms that God gave her and uh, to her advantage. She, by all accounts, she seems a very nice woman. Um, I have been reading a book about her by Kate Williams. I think it's just called Josephine. I'll find out and I'll put it in the description below. Um... But I got a lot of my source material and my, my research material from this book, Josephine by Kate Williams, um, which I thoroughly recommend. It's a very good read. Um, so, yeah, what do you think? What do you think of Josephine? She's gone down in history as this kind of paramour, as, and, and the letters between her and Napoleon are absolutely um, notorious uh, for their saucy content um he was absolutely smitten with her clearly um maybe not so much the other way around we'll we'll never know but um certainly the apart from the affairs and all that kind of thing they might not have been happy necessarily together when they were married but when, after they divorced, they were really close friends and it seemed to have worked out well for Josephine. And to retain the title of Empress of France, yeah, must have annoyed his new wife quite a bit, poor Marie-Louise. 
Um, is it Marie Louise? I have to check. Marie Louise, because that's my middle name. Marie Louise. Those are the possessions. Marie Louise of Austria. Yeah, no, I just had to double check because my middle name is. Middle names are Marie and Louise. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Emma Marie Louise can I do? That's me. Um, yeah, so it must have cheesed off her, his new wife somewhat. I'd be interested in her take on on all of it. But they remained good friends until her death. And um, Napoleon seems to have grieved for her a lot. So her children and her children's children and her grandchildren's children um, went on to disperse throughout the royal families all over the world, not just through Europe. And, um, yeah, she she was quite the matriarch. But let me know what you think in the comments below of our Empress Josephine. And I'd be interested to hear your opinions, as I said before, on Patreon content. What did you want to see from me besides bonus house tree episodes, shout outs in videos and random videos of me doing things not necessarily house tree related? guided tours of places that I'm visiting um yeah let me know what do you want from me in the way of content and I will find somebody who knows how to work the app and get it working <laughs> until next week thank you very much history gang much love to you all for following me on this journey please if you haven't already um give me a subscribe because apparently that it's all about the subscribes not the likes it's all give it a like if you like it, obviously give us a comment um but it's all about the number of views and the number of subscriptions so please do subscribe i put out a video every friday and uh, we'll see who wins the poll next week. Um, I'm going to go and have a think about who to put up in this week's poll. So thank you for joining me. Much love. And I will see you next Friday. Bye.